So this is the piece of music now that has been composed by Ronan O'Reilly, director of music at our Tain Band, for President Higgins as he comes first of all to meet Danny Gall and their captain Michael Murphy from Glen Swilly. His sixth year playing in the championship, and he's only 23 years of age. And then going through Paul Jerkin and so on. It's a team of very strong characters, of course, who've adapted to the management promptings of Jim McGuinness and believed that an All-Ireland win was possible. Arsenal won two very tough Ulster Championships this year and last, starting at the preliminary round in each case. Rory Cavanagh there, one of the stars. There's Mark McHugh going up along, Ryan Bradley. And then it's Paddy McBrearty, Colin McFadden, one of those candidates, I'm sure, for Player of the Year. Then the referee is Morris Deegan from Stradbally and County Leash, his linesman are David Coldrick from Meath. Eddie Kinsella, another leash man, and the sideline official Connor Lane of Cork. And the umpires on duty Kevin O'Brien, Sean Langton, Alan Abbey, and Richard Oxley. So a big day for them as well. And now the turn of the Mayo captain, who's goalkeeper David Clark, in the absence of the injured Andy Moran. It shows the strength of positive willpower and depth of the squad here that they've got on with their business, Mayo, winning matches and not feeling sorry for themselves about the, the absence of their captain. Like Danny Gold, the provincial championships won in the last two years under the astute management of James Foran. There's Aidan O'Shea about whom there is a little bit of a concern. Kevin McLaughlin, Jason Doherty there, the very shoe there, Alan Dillon has been second leading scorer, end of Varley, got the number 13 shirt. There's Killian O'Connor. Scottish champions number 14 in the final. Finally, Michael Conroy, who played in this final back in 2004, came also sub that day and scored a goal. The introduction saw a complete. The special guests here now can go and watch the first ever Donegal Mayo All Ireland Senior Football Final unfold. Is it to be Donegal's second ever success, or will Mayo bridge a gap of 61 years and in the process banish the memory of five final defeats in the last 23 years? Time will tell. overcome the nerves today and really do themselves justice in front of a packed crowd at Croke Park. It's the day of destiny for the players of Donegal and Mayo. It's the day when you want to play your best game ever. Morris Deegan's in charge. The speculation is over. This is the real thing. It, yes, just could I review what I said a couple of moments ago, actually. The players are changing ends, contrary to what we thought here. And Mayo are defending the Hill 16 end of the ground. So that means they're going to face quite a wind in this half. It'll be interesting to see, therefore, will Donegal put in the traditional full forward trio of Murphy, McBrearty and McFadden, draw everybody else out and try and pound ball into those three in the hope of getting a good score. The noise is deafening. Great sense of expectation among the fans. I'm just watching the Donegal goalkeeper. I think he was oh, yeah. under the impression he, that they right. were going to play the other way. That's right, yes. <laughs> Incidentally, the Donegal team arrived in what they told was the right-hand dressing room, their original, their normal dressing room, and they were told to change. That's underway. 123rd All-Ireland Final, and straight away it's Donegal and it's Leo McLoon. Bounce is awkward here. Kane came out to it. Left it there, Colin Boyle, about whom there was a doubt in the build-up to this. First free taken by Donald Bohan. Kevin McLaughlin kicking it in. Controlled with difficulty but handled on the ground there by Killian O'Connor. 
The wind is quite a factor here this afternoon. It's swirling, it's nasty. And the players are going to have to come to terms with it fairly quickly. Look how far back Mark McHugh has got right from the very beginning. All the way in towards Michael Murphy and an awkward bounce there. Took it away from him. First kick out of the match. It's going to be Tomeo. Yeah, just that ball again, badly directed in Michael Murphy, and it's notable, actually, that they've put the most inexperienced defender, actually, Kevin Kane, marking him. I wouldn't have thought that. I thought Cafferty might have got on him. Murphy's playing in the conventional number 14 position, full forward, and Kane, as you say, has moved in from the corner. Moving in to take this one is, once again, Neil Gallagher. Had that tremendous match in the semi-final, dominated his patch. Lee Keegan, good to see him back. Touched away beautifully there by... Paddy McGrath, onto it quickly there came Mark McHugh, and McHugh has already gone back deep, nobody particularly taking him up, but then he's not going to do any damage in his own half of the field. He's moving forward, however, now as our Danny Gall with Leo McLuhan here, challenged by three male players, four. Challenges coming in smartly and sharply, had to. Dolbottom took it well, good outlet pass there to Alan Dillon, who drifted away to the left-hand side. Three players ahead of him. Breeze a factor, however. And the bounce awkward there, but well taken by Eamon McGee. Did really well to go back and forage for that one. Again, it's Mark McHugh. It's this time Rory Gallagher has taken over that role. Controlled here by Carol Lacey. 45 metres out from the target. Beautifully in there to Murphy. Great shot, great goal! Two minutes and 25 seconds on the clock when he got that. What a start for Danny Goal here as they did to win their second ever All-Ireland title. Brilliant ball in by Lacey. It's Murphy who has the height advantage over Kane. And maybe that's a marking task that's a bit too much for Kevin Kane. Murphy wins the first ball in and it's a dream start for the favourites, the Ulster champions. I just throw attention to it a moment or two ago, Jerry. I felt it was wrong to put Kane on him. And again, what Donegal have cleverly done there for Murphy directly in front of the goals. But knows his handling that time. It was perfect control from Lacey's uh, delivery in. And what about the finish? It was emphatic. Well, that is an enormous body blow for Mayo. The thing is, they have an awful lot of time to actually repair the damage. But that's a poor kick in there by Barry Moore and didn't look confident at all. Well, a goal that's come after two minutes and 25 seconds on the clock as the referee goes in. It's not the fastest goal ever in an All-Ireland final. That was 37 seconds back in 1962, scored by Gary McMahon for Kerry. But how about this? Once he got it under control, real danger, and there was nothing Kane could do about it. A ferocious shot. Happy fans. Oh, yes, it was a thunderous shot. My God almighty, David Clark, who's a wonderful shot stopper, barely saw it. What a boost for Danny Gall. Playing with the wind, remember. Keith Higgins. Back in here as far as Colin Boyle. Forced out for most of that semi-final with a virus. Danny Gall have it back again. And that's McGlynn slung around there by Jason Doherty. No question about the free kick. And the referee is in very, very quickly just to warn Jason Doherty. Uh, no more of that. Or he could be seeing a card. Might even see a card before that. Very early to be incurring the wrath of the match referee Morris Deegan. It's a, That's a very early yellow very, card. Very early card indeed. Again, I just wonder if that warranted. Here's McGlynn. I think the referee has decided he's going to lay down the law early on here. Worked by McBrearty. Cross here as far as Rory Kavanagh. Chasing after him Keith Higgins. There to O'Shea, but it's still Kavanagh. Very strong. Beautifully in here. Oh, another sling down challenge there on Mark McHugh. And if the referee gave one yellow card already, he'll probably give another one. Yeah, just walk Mark McHugh coming through here. Lee Keegan catches him very high. That's a poor tackle by Lee Keegan. And, uh, you know, Morris Egan has no alternative but to issue a yellow card to him. So two yellow cards in the space of uh, about a minute. All of them inside the opening six minutes. And Mayo already a goal behind. Free kick coming up, which will be taken by Colin McFadden. 
once Mark McHugh is OK. Well, he's a vital influence, Mark McHugh, that much we know from this year's championship. Terrific young player. Colin McFadden now from 13 metres out. Breeze blowing over his shoulder. 20 goals top scorer this season with 328, now make it 329. Could hardly miss from there. Yeah, I know there's only six minutes gone or so, but already there's a problem emerging on the far side of the field for, uh, from a male point of view. That's again, just watch that tackle there a few moments ago. That's what Jason Doherty got booked for. Kick out quickly taken here out as far as Lee Keegan. And now he's got to be working that tightrope of a yellow card for hopefully the rest of the match. Again, the bounce is unkind. Comes back here to Frank Buglin once again. What a season he's had. Terrific football. Carol Lacey has set up the goal for Murphy. Nicely down once again as far as Paddy McPriarty's. The marking's very loose. Donald Vaughan after him. Can't get to him. McPriarty kicks it and McPriarty's shot has gone just to the left. And a missed opportunity to add to the two scores so far. Yeah, the point I was making a moment or two ago, Jerry, is down the far side, the Cusick stands out of the field, Donegal are running at the Mayo defence, and Mayo are finding it very hard to put in legitimate tackles and stop them. Well, he has been concerned, James Horan, about uh, Lee Keegan initially, then there was a virus affecting Colin Boyle, and there's also been an old injury flaring up for Aidan O'Shea, but uh, certainly Jim McGuinness must be very happy with the way the opening minutes of this match have panned out. Frank McGlynn. Getting on the ball time and again. Clearly telegraphed his intentions there to Carol Lacey, and the referee whistles against Colin Boyle. And Colin Boyle is saying it was a legitimate challenge. Lacey saw it otherwise. And really, when you look at it, second time of asking, the referee had very few options. Very few options. Colin Boyle was late with that tackle, didn't, and uh, very, fair enough, free kick for Donegal. Can't argue with it. Well, that's three fouls so far, two yellow cards given against Mayo players. They've got to be careful. Got to be careful, and it's a sign of anxiety. They're quite edgy at the moment, not getting to the ball. Put, their touch is poor, actually, in their own forward line. Lacey now can use the wind here, letting it drop in towards Colin McFadden, but it breaks away out as far as Keith Higgins again. Double bottom now. Gives the easy ball to Keegan, chance to carry it and then drive it forward. One against three. Conroy getting it this time, and Conroy's got a little push in the back there. And Michael Conroy wins a free kick for Mayo here in a possibly scoring position. Yeah, Conroy was outstanding actually in the semi final against Dublin. His movement across the line was wonderful. That time he got out in front of McGee, got to the ball first, and McGee pushed him in the back. Difficult enough one this time though for Enda Varley. Varley, scorer of two points in the uh, semi final win. Teacher works in uh, Mayo, plays for Gary Moore. Scored a goal when these teams last met in a league match back in March. But Enda Varley now could uh, raise Mayo cheers. They can put this one over. It's not easy, as Martin was saying. 30 metres from the target. Can't quite pull it in. And eventually it comes safely back to Mark McHugh and then away out of danger via Frank McGlynn. Held further away by Leo McLoon. Nearly Gallagher now. And Denny Gold just building out. Uncomplicated football. Nice and simple. They know the pattern, they know the normal routine. Get themselves out of trouble quickly. Rory Cavanaugh's ball there goes straight to Keith Higgins. Good work by the number four of May off as far as Alan Dillon now. Kicking it into the three-man inside forward line, flicked away well there by Neil McGee. Yeah, that's the point I made a moment or two ago. A number of the Mayo forwards, when the ball has been delivered to them, their touch is poor. I know they're under a lot of pressure, but you need to be able to have those balls sticking. Well, maybe Kevin McLaughlin can raise a cheer or two. Back here as far as Aidan O'Shea. Once again, it's Lee Keegan prepared to join the attack, flicking it into the corner here. In as far as Killian O'Connor had that marvellous semi final and uh, looked to be pulled, but the referee says play on. Three men surrounded him, it's still O'Connor trying to battle for this. Only 20 years of age, and in the end, the referee gives the free against him. I thought there should have been a free in there a moment or two ago. After O'Connor 
came away from that. He made contact with Eamon McGee. Referee hasn't seen it, but the umpires have. Play continues at the other end. Donegal advance. Dangerous situation, and it's Paddy McCreary. Comes back down again. Back to McFadden. It's another one, and it's Colin McFadden this time with a goal after 11 minutes. His seventh ever championship goal, fourth of the season, and what a year he's having. It was McBriarty who struck the pulse, came back down, not dealt with by the Mayo defence, who are looking incredibly nervous. A very, very brittle-looking defence, and it's penalised emphatically by McFadden. And it's 2-1 to no score. And it's looking very, very bad for Mayo once again, even at this early stage of the final. That's wonderful opportunity by McFadden, it must be said. But once again, Kevin Kane's handling, just as other players' handling, uh, Mayo players' handling, has let them down at the field. At the moment, I think Morris Egan has gone down to talk to their umpires at the far side because I think Killian O'Connor was involved in an altercation with him and McGee when the ball was cleared. Yeah, as I saw it, uh, Killian O'Connor and McGee got involved. Play was moving up the field. This is where Killian O'Connor felt he should have had a free and then just uh, watch... There you go, but there was another blow there. Yep. And if the referee saw that, then Killian O'Connor could be in trouble, but it looks like the referee is going to hand out a yellow card to both players. The last thing that Tomeo need at this stage is to lose a man. They've already lost Andy Moore in the course to injury since the quarter-final match against Down. I think the referee, Morris Deegan, is just telling them to calm down. Now, nothing daft but he can only do so much, it's up to the players, a yellow card per player. Yeah, Killian O'Connor is lucky that it's not more than a yellow card, Emma McGee deserves a yellow card, but going back to the original incident before Killian O'Connor got involved there, I felt he should have been given a free in. Yep, that's the way he felt it as well, but it didn't happen. And what a body blow this is to uh, Mayo. Such a poor start and so reminiscent of what happened when they were here last. But 2006. Let's hope it doesn't develop into that kind of a game. Carol Lacey. Huge one down towards Murphy again. He's catching brilliantly into McFadden as a third, maybe. This time it's stopped well by David Clark. And if that had gone in, well, you would really feel for the rest of this match. There's uh, Donny Goldblair still down on the field, uh, down on the deck. Colin McFadden and is getting himself back up again. He's okay. Pride wounded, maybe. Lee Keegan kicking, Durkin comes, takes it, spills away from him, and the referee, well, I thought they uh, heard a whistle for a moment there, but the referee says play on. Leo McLoon. Back once again as far as Carol Lacey. Paddy McGrath now. Trying to go by Colm Boyle. And McGrath setting it up once again. This time it's Anthony Thompson. Played back into space, but Boyle takes over once again. And now there's a chance for Mayo to counter-attack. Really strong by the concession of those two goals. Some eight minutes apart. Two vital scores for Danny Gold to really settle down the nerves. Came in here as raging hot favourites in the minds of so many people. Well, it could so easily have been a third for Donny Gall, but for a very, very good stop a moment ago there by this man, David Clark, the 28-year-old from Ballina Stevenites. Again, it is Donny Gall. If they can get to this ball, and even then, Mark McHugh went in with the challenge, won it. Comes back to Mayo once more. They need a score to settle themselves down in this match. Michael Conroy. It's very tight. Mayo looking incredibly nervous. Made a lot of mistakes. Well, this could so easily uh, have been goal number three here, as this ball came down, was set up there for Colin McFadden, and it was stopped by the right leg of David Carr. While we've been watching that, Yes, when we were watching that, actually, Kevin McLaughlin just took his opportunity under a lot of pressure, sliced the ball beautifully between the posts, so at least it gets Mayo on the scoreboard. In the 16th minute. Yeah. 
So 2-1 to a point for Mayo, and Kevin McLaughlin credited with that opening point. The difficulty for Mayo at the moment is around the middle of the field. The two lads, Morn and Aidan O'Shea, are not able to get to the pace of the game. But they've won it back here by a good piece of pressing on the part of Killian O'Connor, and then the foul was committed, and there's a free kick. And uh, Eamon McGee, who's already been yellow-carded in this match, walks away from that somewhat ruefully. Yes, it's interesting watching Aidan O'Shea at the moment coming over to the sideline to James Horn. I just wonder what kind of shape he's in. I just have a feeling maybe he's come in with a slight injury into this match. Well, it was that old injury, wasn't it, that yep. kept him out for nearly three months earlier on in the season. Killian O'Connor hit some wonderful points in the semi-final. He plays with great calmness. A lot of pressure on his shoulders. Puts his boot through that, hits it accurately and puts it over the bar. And now that's exactly what the game has required. Two points in a row for Mayo. First by Kevin McLaughlin and now by Killian O'Connor. Yeah, from a Mayo point of view, that should settle them. It should give them, it, you know, it's given them a toehold in, in the game. But, you know, they're not, as you said, Jared, they're lucky they're not 10 points to two down because that was a wonderful save by Clark a couple of moments ago. Certainly, Martin, every time that ball goes down into that uh, Mayo goal mouth, I think Mayo fans probably have their hearts in their mouths because. The backs are having their difficulties. Here it comes again. Murphy once more, still against Kevin Kane. And he sets off yet again. This time trying to fist it over the bar. This time stopped by David Clark. And the wind is a factor as well. And of course, Donegal are very wisely using it during the opening minutes of this first half. Bottom. Struggling to get away, but succeeding eventually is McLaughlin. Back to Donald Bottom. Partly blocked there by Rory Kavanagh, took the heat out of it, comes back to Neil Gallagher, swiftly forward here as far as Ryan Bradley, then on as far as Colin McFadden. McFadden, the 29-year-old from St Michael's, taking it by Keith Higgins, and the referee eventually saw the foul. Very good tackling by Keith Higgins, he still Colin McFadden up that time, Colin might have given the ball that little bit earlier, but I think he double hopped, certainly he overcarried it, and uh, credit to Higgins with his tackling. Just watch this here. Yeah. Well, it's all under the okay, but I think it's, it's it's steps really. It steps more than anything else that he's called that he's blown for. This is uh, taken in here by Neil McGee. Jersey pulled by Ender Varley. Still gets away. And there's a gap here which Ryan Bradley can exploit. He can make up a lot of ground here. Wants to try and take it around Aidan O'Shea. He clearly is struggling with his fitness. Back once again it comes. The bustling left half forward punches the air as he puts that one over the bar. Ryan Bradley's first point, he'll be absolutely delighted with that. He was man of the match in two of the Ulster Championship games where he was taken off before half-time in the semi-final. So that will do his confidence a whole lot of good and he makes it 2-2 to two points. Yeah, he'll be delighted with that because he's been taken off actually in every game so far in the, in the championship, but last day it was because of a poor performance, but that was summer spawn, lovely score. Kevin McLaughlin, this time it's Alan Dillon. Towards McLaughlin. Firing it in here, up to, into the netting, the side netting, all gone wide. And that's uh, Mayo's second wide of this match, both teams with two wides. Yeah, that was a waste of a ball. In fairness, Killian O'Connor was the only one up. Maybe he was trying to direct it into Killian, but he sliced it off the side of his foot and it went wide on his own side. But just, let's just see this kick out. Watch Dorkin's kick out. Will it go down the middle towards Neil Gallagher, who's broken most of the ball so far, or will they try it short of the wing? James Horan there encouraging his players to settle down, get into the match a bit more, feel confident about the challenge. is around there once again this time as far as Ryan Bradley slipped into the half forwards here back to Colin McFadden it comes kicking from 45 meters with unerring accuracy how about that what a score a goal and two points now the goal coming after 11 minutes his first point was a free and that one brilliantly put over from play hugely effective this season Colin McFadden 
and now 2-3 two, to two points. That's wonderful efficiency, but if you go back to the source of it, there was a mix-up again under the broken ball by two of the Mayo players, poor communication, lost the break, McFadden finished it off. Are you anyway surprised that Mayo haven't got an extra player in defence playing against the breeze with the power and strength of this Johnny Gold defence, so evident in the opening minutes of this match? Well, they've been trying to play Keith Higgins over in front of the full back line, but the quality of the Donegal delivery has been such that they're cutting it out, and Murphy's positioning in front of the goals, now Cafferty has gone back on him, but Murphy's positioning has been very, very effective, and his finishing, is, the finish that we saw at the beginning was really emphatic. Once again, it's Kevin McLaughlin. This time, uh, Lee Keegan trying to get it back towards McLaughlin, can't hold on to it. It's study goal, ruthlessly efficient. Doing the simple things really well. Once again, Ryan Bradley trying to break out of defence. And even when the challenge doesn't quite produce a result for Mayo, in comes a support player, Rory Kavanagh this time. Thompson then with the ball thrown. Referee says uh, that he didn't like the way in which it was dispatched. Yeah, he was throwing him for over carrying, which I think is a bit harsh. I think Rory Cavan will feel hard done by at that time. I felt myself. But you know what was noticeable just before that uh, uh, moment, how sharper and faster Donny Goller into the breaking ball. They're so much crisper and faster. I think that was thrown, all right. Thrown, yeah. And the referee having a word or two there still with Rory Cavan. Down the ground at the moment is Eamon McGee. It's Eamon's 100th competitive match for Donegal this afternoon. And uh, he'll want, uh, at the end of this, to be able to celebrate it with an All-Ireland medal. The ultimate for the Guido player. Very skillful player, very adept player as well, and uh, able to go back and cover in the full back line should that be required, alongside his brother Neil. That was a wonderful tackle, actually, from Mickey Conroy that put the ball loose. But when that ball went loose, Mayo were very, very slow to come in, in, the, in on the breaking ball. Donegal so far have looked more dynamic, more fluent when they have got the ball, and their, you know, their methodology or their system is working much, much uh, crisper than Mayo's. Mayo really haven't come out of the blocks yet. I think the four Mayo fans in that crowd there, when they saw two goals going in inside 11 minutes, they said, "Not again! Not the third time in seven years this is happening to us." They went here with a lot of faith and hope today, especially because it wasn't Kerry this year they were facing in the final. Well, Killian O'Connor now scored one point from a free already. This from 45 metres by the time he gets to hit it. And will it curl in? Not quite. There was a tricky breeze down there today, and it's very, very awkward for the free takers. Yeah, but nonetheless, in a game of this importance and considering that you're, whatever it is, seven points down, scores like that are needed to actually just eat into the lead and build up your confidence. Well, James Horan will be aware that uh, Danny Gaul are a very, very good second-half team. And having been given a lead like this, having won over a lead like this in the opening 23 minutes or thereabouts, they're going to be very hard to pin back. That's broken down this time by Barry Moran. This time the referee saw some holding, and it's a free kick which is very quickly taken as far as Kevin McLaughlin. Swiftly in here, just about taken by Paul Dirk, and with some difficulty, back out as far as Paddy McGrath. And there's a lot of space now in front of the ball carrier, who's Rory Kavanagh. McGrath's kept going forward. Kavanagh once again. Inevitably, it's Mark McHugh, the Sligo IT student. Lacey. Quickly down as far as Ryan Bradley and now Paddy Pat McCreary. Back once again, it comes to McHugh. One against three or four. He was looking for McFadden, but it's the Mayo cover that winning is winning at this time. Colin Boyle. Up as far as Michael Conroy. Chance to turn now. Mayo needing a score from him. Up into the sky it comes. Comes back down into the waiting arms here of Anthony Thompson, about to be challenged by Jason Doherty. Swiftly out towards Rory Cavada, and once again, the would-be press of Mayo comes to nothing because there's great composure and great strength and great togetherness normally about Donegal, except for that wayward pass. Back it comes to Donald Bohan. Jason Doherty now. This time, Killian O'Connor taking over, hitting it. Hitting it to the right, 
kept in place somehow there by Ender Varley. Back down as far as McLaughlin. And a nice easy point taken there by Kevin McLaughlin. Two points for him. Yeah, that's a well taken score. Fair play to Conroy. Kept the ball in play. And McLaughlin just composed himself sufficiently to get around Anthony Thompson and put it over the bar. But it's, you know, the previous three attacks from a Mayo or from a Mayo point of view came to nothing. You know, aimless kind of balls in. And they need to be much more cohesive inside if they are to penetrate that Donegal defence. Well, McLaughlin's been the brightest of their attackers so far. Just about nine minutes to go to half time. Aidan O'Shea jumping, catching really well. Great piece of fielding. Referee gives him a free kick once the Mayo of the Donegal player is back, and now the referee brings the ball forward 30 metres. And it'll be Alan Dillon who will take it. Alan Dillon has been one of the great leaders of Mayo football over the last 10 years. That was in for Conroy. The best he could hope for was a, a throw ball, but the referee saw the ball handled on the ground anyway. And Mark McKee was the last man up with it, so it's uh, going to be a free kick. Yeah, it's great covering by Mark McHugh once again. There's a tribute to his athleticism and his ability to read the game. But, oh. That was very nearly gifted to Mayo, but for a bit of vigilance on the part of the Donegal backs, and they were lucky. I thought the hex in them, I'm afraid. <laughs> Carol Lacey, as far as Ryan Bradley, on here as far as Frank McGlynn. That's the support there outside of it. It's the other cornerback, Paddy McGrath. Turn back once again here towards Neil Gallagher. Oh, it's a terrible ball. Maybe Danny Bowler just being lured into complacency here as Ender Varley has it. Mistakes by Danny Gall and Mayo are the ones who are the beneficiaries. Yeah, the quality of the kick pass that time from Lee Keegan was wonderful. Beautiful crossfield ball, well caught by Varley, takes on his man, draws the free, gives Mayo an opportunity to cut into the lead once more. Well, this ball here was uh, oh so dangerous, and Paul Durkin did really well to kick it away. You remember in the league semi final with Kieran Donahue, he did yep. something similar, and Alan Dillon intercepted it, which resulted, I think, in a Mayo goal. It'll be Killian O'Connor who will take it. He's pointed one from a free already. 25 metres or so out from the target. Usually a player who kicks the ball exceptionally well. 18 pointed frees out of 24 already in this year's championship. And this is one Mayo need, and he is the provider. So it's two for O'Connor, the Ballon Turbo player. And now it's two, three to four points, and the gap is back to five. Yeah, they'll be very happy with that, Ger, because they have come back from the, the gates of hell, so to speak, and around the middle of the field now they're starting to get a little bit of a grip in. Well, she has caught a good ball, Barry Moore has broken one or two on Neil Gallagher, and now maybe they're getting into their rhythm somehow. But those two goals from Michael Murphy and Colin McFadden, three minutes and 11 minutes on the clock. They are the most telling scores so far. As it's kicked out into the middle here, and it's won back by Mayo, and then... The loose ball swiftly picked up here by Donegal once more, and uh, it's Mark McHugh back there doing the spade work. His dad, of course, Martin, played 20 years ago against Dublin in the 1992 final, scored three points in that match. James kicking it long, or rather Mark kicking it long, intended for Michael Murphy. Instead, it is Ger Camperke who's now gone into a marking job. Line ball's going to be to Mayo. Linesman over there is David Coldrick. Donald Vaughan kicking it all the way back to his goalkeeper to adjust his footing there, David Clark. Aidan O'Shea. They have taken a long, long time to settle in this match. They're still in the hunt. Kevin McLaughlin. Keegan threading it forward towards Conroy. Swiftly across comes Neil McGee. Well, it's some ten minutes now since Donny Gold's last score. Meanwhile, Aidan O'Shea on the attack from Mayo. Varley steps away from trouble and then good little interception there by Leo McClune, but the referee says it was an illegal one. Free kick quickly taken. Lots of spare players back there for Donny Gold. One of them, Frank McGlynn. 
just making sure that the danger is snuffed out immediately. Neil Gallagher resolutely carrying it forward here, helped by Emma McGee. Carol Lace is way up there, up joining the attack. This is something that Donegal do, of course, bring their half-backs forward on occasions, looking for breaks. Mayo trying to cover the gaps. Dylan inside here, taking a return ball. Kicks it well. Comes back down off the post to Michael Conroy and he loses it. And inevitably, Mark McHugh once again back, but the referee saw a push this time and he's given a free kick against Donegal. Much to the annoyance of the Donegal followers. Yeah, I think it's of the soft variety, it must be said. The ball came off the post that time. It was a 50 50 tussle, I think, between the two of them. No point in ar arguing with Morris Deegan. He has given the decision. Dylan takes a shot from outside. Just watch it, it hits the post, comes down. It looked to me a 50 50 contest, but the referee has given Mayo the opportunity to narrow the lead. Thought there might have been a free much earlier on at the time when we had uh, yellow cards issued to Killian O'Connor and to Eamon McGee, but they get the free kick belatedly anyway, much, much later, and it's going to be Killian O'Connor who will take it, and this can now make it a four-point game after a dreadful start. Into the wind on a swirling day at Croke Park. Killian O'Connor kicking across left to right, straight between the posts in the end. Three points for him, all from freeze, to go with Kevin McLaughlin's two points from play. That makes up Mayo's five, and it's now two, three to five points, or nine points to five. Yeah, and credit Mayo for the way they've come back into the game, and notice where Michael Murphy is playing out at the moment, around the middle of the field. They've got quite disjointed out in that sector at the moment, have done a A lot of the deliveries inside are being intercepted now by the Mayo defence, who've started maybe to read the situation a bit better. Well, Mayo will have the breeze for the second 35 minutes, but then the win never won an All-Ireland final, and never will. This is Colin Boyle, pursued by Leo McLoon. Referee saw the foul quickly taken. Good work here by Michael Conroy. He's working across that line from right to left, and he's keeping Neil McGee on his toes, and he's getting in timely shots like that, and he's put it over the bar. And it's a very good point by Michael Conroy, who came off the bench in 2004 in that final against Kerry. He was wearing number 30 that day. He was only 19. He came on and he got a goal and a point. He's got a point here, and the gap's down to three, and there are two minutes to go to half-time. Yeah, credit Barry more than that time, the way he broke the ball away from McGee, and Boyle picked up the break, gave it to Conroy, and Conroy's confidence was manifest. Fine score. Mark McHugh now, with Rory Kavanagh kicking it forward. In there as far as McBriarty. It's lost, turned over, and it's... Mayo who are working hard now, really working incredibly hard, getting themselves back into this match, showing the necessary industry. That's nicely up there towards Killian O'Connor. He has to battle for it, try to keep it in play. Thompson gets onto it for Danny Gold, surrounded and held, and it's going to be a free for the Ulster champions. It's taken by Eamon McGee, close to half time. Here comes Ryan Bradley. Remember, it's. Uh, a Donegal side that had a very nice handy lead at one stage. They had uh, two goals and a point in front after 11 minutes at seven points up. Carol Lacey. In as far as Murphy. Intended there for Gallagher. Donegal player on the ground, referee busily keeping an eye on the uh, stricken players. And it's got to be a free kick. Yeah, Colm O'Boyle this time, I think, is the one that's going... Certainly a late uh, tackle that time by Donald Vaughan. That's what it was called for. OK, the high tackle maybe from Colm Boyle, but originally I think the free was for this one here. The late tackle by Donald Vaughan on Carl Lacey. And once again, the decibel level rises here, and the referee has now gone down to have words with Donald Vaughan, and he's going to get a yellow card as well, I imagine. So that will make it four Mayo players yellow carded in the first half against one from Donegal. We're in stoppage time. Chance now for uh, Donegal to add to their lead. 
It's been whittled down to three, where once it was seven. So two minutes of added time being played. And the free taker will be Colin McFadden once again, the 29-year-old teacher, teaches at St. Eunan's College. And I'm told that today is the feast of St. Eunan, who is uh, Donegal's patron saint. Smiling down, I'm sure, on the Donegal charges. McFadden last scored in the 20th minute, so 15 minutes on from that. Can he get another score here? And a late, late point for Donegal before the break. Referee having a word or two with players out of picture. Starting there with Anthony Thompson. Meanwhile, all eyes on Colin McFadden. Can this go over? Can this extend Donegal's lead? The answer, yes. A very emphatic yes. And he's got a goal and three in this first half. Wonderful performance by the number 15. And so four between them once again. Yes, and it's their first score, actually, I think, in 16 minutes, which gives a good indication of the way that Mayo have come into the game. Mayo's spirit kicked in, characters showed in their, in their play as the half went on, because that was an appalling start that they had. Last few seconds, then, of this first half of the All-Ireland Football Final 2012. Double bottom setting off once again. This time it's carried on by Jason Doherty. They need a big input from him. Higgins up there, an opportunity maybe. Donald Vaughan recycled once again. Back it comes here towards end of Varley, kicking and kicking under pressure and putting over the bar. End of Varley gets his first point of the All Ireland final, and once again it's back to a three-point game. And Mayo, who made the most awful start to this All Ireland final, are right back in the mix once again. We've played the two minutes of uh, added time and the referee I imagine will get the whistle to his lips very very shortly now once this is kicked out by Paul Durkin and it's half time in the All-Ireland Football Final 2012 Killian O'Connor got three points for Mayo all of them from freeze but Donegal made the most wonderful of starts a goal after three minutes by Michael Murphy then another goal by Colin McFadden after 11. And you may remember Colin McFadden had a very good chance of getting a third, but for the intervention of goalkeeper David Clark. But to their credit, Mayo playing against the wind have battled back strongly. They forced their way back into this game, even though they haven't been dominating the exchanges around midfield. And at half time in the All Ireland final, it's Donegal who lead. Donegal two goals and four points, Mayo seven points. Analysis coming up right after this. Yes, 35 minutes from realising their life's ambitions. No changes made by either management team. As far as we can see, before we start this second half, only three between them. The match being watched all around the world. Wherever you are watching it, we hope you're enjoying the contest. And I'm sure Edel Cawley from Bal Balmullet and Aidan Elder in Delhi are enjoying it. Second half then, and straight away it is Aidan O'Shea who kicks it forward here. Inside towards end of value, got a very, very good point during that first half. Mayo trying to make the best possible start now. And add to Donegal's woes. There you have Ryan Bradley holding onto the ball too long, conceding a free kick. And an early chance now to put some pressure on that Donegal defence. This is going to be taken by Alan Dillon. Dillon now. Well, he's almost uh, 29, 29 next Friday, so looking for an early birthday present as he kicks this one in dangerously in there. Well fielded at the back there, inevitably by McGee, Neil McGee. Back out towards Mark McHugh. This once again, Ryan Bradley. Caught for overholding a few moments ago. Out as far as Cavanaugh, midfielder, alongside Gallagher. Frankie McGlynn hitting it forward there towards Mark McHugh chance to play the ball in towards Liam McLoon and a real chance well there was a moment to go there until such time as Aidan O'Shea got back swung him around and the referee blows his whistle a look of injured innocence on the face of Aidan O'Shea 
you know, this time Aiden gets them all wrong, takes them down, but it must be said, Donegal playing into the wind will be able to go back to the style that they're most used to and most comfortable with. And it was noticeable at that time, the McHugh shorthand passing game was very much in evidence leading up to that free game. Colin McFadden then ready to get the first point of the second half. Goal and three in the opening 35. And it's interesting that uh, three of his four points have come from Freeze. Donegal with two early goals, of course, if he joined us late. First 11 minutes of the first half. Two points from play, one of them by Ryan Bradley, the other by Colin McFadden. That's been their lot. So now Mayo with Colin Boyle, has fit to play in the last few days. Kevin Kane, who really had his hands full there in the opening minutes of this match when he was marking Michael Murphy. Here's Ender Varley trying to slip away from the challengers, overdoing it eventually, laying the ball off, and the referee has given a free in. And uh, he's lucky to get that one in the end because he almost held on too long, I felt. Yeah, he ran into a bit of traffic here. He got past Paddy McGrath once again. Lacey comes in with a tackle and he more or less was crowded out, lucky enough to get it. But just going back, it was fascinating to watch the kick out that time from Clark out to Colin Boyle. Every single Donegal player retreated back the pitch. So they're going to go back to the defensive mode that we saw last year and that defensive template that served them so well. Killian O'Connor will take this so they can go point for point. Start of the second half, these teams and just keep three points between them. O'Connor with his fourth, all freeze. Mayo fans still full of hope. It's been a long, long time, 61 years since the San Maguire Cup last went back to County Mayo. Will today be the day? Yeah, big plus for Mayo actually has been the display of Ender Varley in the last while. He's won quite a lot of ball in front of Paddy McGrath, and that's hugely encouraging for them. Paul Durkin kicking into the wind and he's done really well planting it in midfield this time it's Mayo with Aidan O'Shea across as far as Lee Keegan trying to begin the next Mayo attack three players all arriving at once but there was a push in the back and the referee gives the free kick to Donegal which is taken by Neil Gallagher Carol Lacey McHugh and a string of hand passes before Rory Cabot eventually carries it deep Frank McGlynn handled with difficulty there by Paddy McBrearty so a shot come down up the upright earlier on before Colin McFadden got the second goal for Donegal it's back once again with McGlynn 45 metres from the target McGlynn once more Cohen trying to get in a track tackle but he doesn't succeed and that one is beautifully over the bar Frank McGlynn showing the touches of a, a number 14 and not a number four real predatory instinct here he's up there he looks composed he looks confident and he hits it over and he's now got a goal and four points in this year's championship a real all-star certainly the impact of that was immense but lateral play by Donegal patient play by Donegal McGlynn making the overlap and having the confidence to shoot another very, very good point. Well, David Walsh is coming in, and the player going off is Ryan Bradley. So once again, he is taken off in a Donegal match. And this is so early in the second half, only five minutes in. But David Walsh will probably feel that uh, he has a point to prove and was very luck unlucky in the first place not to make the starting 15. Broken down this time by Barry Moran. We were sitting in the stands last year when uh, Mayo reached the semi-final of the championship, only to be knocked out by Kerry. And Dylan was uh, looking for an extra couple of metres. So now Lee Keegan, Donald Bohan. That's well cut out by a very vigilant Eamon McGee. Line ball, taken quickly back as far as Lee Keegan. Controlled here by Barry Moran. Mayo looking for scores, a point will do at this stage, he's put it wide, missed opportunity. Very much so, good drive by Barry Morton, needs to be doing more of that, just shows you what he's capable of if he does get forward, unlucky a little bit with that, that it went to the wrong side of the post. Still four points between the teams, 
Donegal have led this match right from the very beginning. Wonderful start for Jim McGuinness there alongside Rory Gallagher. Worst possible opening for James Horan, who will take an awful lot of comfort from the way in which his side battled and battled hard. Big, huge leap in the air. 18 scoring chances created by Mayo's against just 12 for Danny Gold. That's a, an interesting statistic. All very well creating the chances, but they haven't been finishing them with uh, the regularity that they would wish. Michael Conroy was pushed in the back, and I think he's telling the referee this has happened more than once before, ref. We we'll just go back to the source of that once more. A great bit of feeling by Barry Morn, the aforementioned Barry Morn that we talked about a moment or two ago. He definitely has grown into the game as the game has gone on and has started to get the better of, of Neil Gallagher. Well, they were absolutely out of things in the opening 20 minutes in midfield. Mayo winning very, very little possession. And Barley will kick with that left boot. He's put over one point from play already. Had one free that uh, went up into the air but didn't find the target during the first half. This is one they could do with, early stages of the second half, just some seven and a half minutes in. Follows through but doesn't hit with accuracy, and again it's missed. Yeah, I know he's the kicker from the right-hand side because he's a left-footed kicker, but you would just think because of Killian O'Connor's, you know, capabilities at place kicking from any point in the ground that he should take on the responsibility of those. Paul Durkin taking his time. And this time, very cleverly picking out Rory Cabin, who made a drive from midfield. That's a good block. Aidan O'Shea trying to get after Cabin again. Lovely turn by the number nine of Donegal. He's elusive, clever and swift. Nicely forward here. It's Paddy McGrath's up in support. This is David Walsh, his first intervention since coming on as a sub for uh, Ryan Bradley. Four balls straight to Jason Doherty. May only need a big contribution from him and from Michael Conroy. And again, a wayward shot, away to the right of the post. That's three bad misses now by Mayo in the space of about five minutes, and suddenly they are on uh, six wides. Yeah, just you know, panicking a little bit when they get the ball, like trying to take uh, kicks from difficult angles. I know Varley's one from a dead ball should have been finished. That time, Conroy had a little bit of support available to him, could have taken the ball in a little bit further, just a little bit more composure would have stood him in good stead. I've seen James Nallen there, one of the selectors, also the runner for Mayo, out there giving a bit of encouragement, perhaps some advice to the uh, Mayo forwards just to take the time a bit more and be composed. This time a good catch by Neil Gallagher. That's a very important fetch. Anthony Thompson now, big one up it goes towards McFadden. Well fielded by Kevin Kane, doing neatly out as far as Lee Keegan. Keegan now has an opportunity to run it forward here. Had that dislocated finger during the uh, semi-final which forced him off. This breaks, Barley's after it, touched back by McGlynn. Durkin hits it out. Dangerous moment. Good anticipation by Donegal at the back, working it out as far as Mark McHugh. On as far as Paddy McBrayer to his uh, pal from Kilcar. Back it comes again to McHugh. McBrayer taking over once more, 19 years of age. Youngest player playing in today's final. Here as far as Carol Lacey. Held on to it. Neil Gallagher now, 40 metres from the target. They're very short in their passes, but they're holding on to the possession protecting the football, guarding it and being careful about where they deliver it. That was David Walsh going after it again after Keith Higgins got a fingertip to it. It's still Danny Gall and it's still Carol Lacey. How will this finish up? It's Michael Murphy eventually taking on the responsibility and that one is going away to the left-hand side and it's a missed opportunity. Freeze against him. Yeah, missed opportunity for Donegal. Great defending though, it must be said by Mayo, forcing Donegal wide. But this game is very much in the balance. Even though there's four points in it, you can see that both sides putting everything into it. And just that little bit of composure that would make the difference between winning and losing is absent with both sides at the moment. They haven't looked like getting one, but uh, what a goal would do for Mayo were they to get one. David Clark into midfield again. It's the towering figure there of Neely Gallagher going up, just as he did in the semi-final against Cork. Wonderful performance in midfield to Murphy. That time a high challenge. This time it's by Donald Bond. He's got to be careful. He's yellow carded already. Referee looked at it. 
And uh, Bohon was able to walk away, slung around, needs to be disciplined. Needs to be disciplined, but just the last two kickouts, you know, we've talked about the tussle between Neil Gallagher and Barry Moore, and that time it was between Neil Gallagher and Aidan O'Shea. But Gallagher is starting to show the form that he had in the semi final against Cork. Two great catches under severe pressure. It's going to be another change, and Martin McElhenney is going to come on for Danny Gall. That's number 17 there, and the player is going to be replaced is going to be Paddy McBrearty. So the youngster is going to come off, and uh, another player who is strong, forceful, able to play half order midfield is about to come on. But before that happens, looks like Danny Gall are going to take their free kick. Michael Murphy standing over it. whose dad, Mick, comes from County Mayo and is watching his son, but I'm sure Mick, the dad, is watching Michael and uh, cheering on for him, cheering him on at this stage, and cheering for Danny Gall as he kicks it from 45 metres. Beautiful kick, wonderfully executed to go with the goal he got after three minutes. And it's now 2-7, 2-8 points. And this is that phase in the match now where Danny Gall will be hoping to tighten the nut on uh, Mayo, squeeze them as best they can and try and ensure that in the home straight they have a decent lead as Paddy McBrady comes off and Martin McElhenney comes, comes on. Yeah, I think in the Australian rules they call it the moving quarter and there's no doubt about it that Donegal have gone into moving quarter mode in the, at, at this moment. Got a couple of nice scores. I like that to the three misses that Donegal have, you know, it's just giving Donegal that bit more confidence. This is Varley, came out, got there well ahead of Paddy McGrath. Aidan O'Shea now. Oof. Thompson bounced off him, wasn't physically strong enough to shoulder with O'Shea. And the referee has blown his whistle, it's going to be a free in for Mayo. Killian O'Connor looks like he's going to take the responsibility this time. A couple of angry gestures in there. Aidan O'Shea and uh, Neil McGee, well that was the shoulder bang down when Thompson flat of his back almost he's a big big man Aidan O'Shea I know the uh, Australian rules clubs were very interested in attracting him over there but thankfully he stayed with Gaelic Games he's a student of course and he's a, a very very bright future I think yeah. Ender Barley is going to take it Martin yeah he's taking it again difficult angle the shoot angle well he is the uh, specialist kicker from that right hand side with the left boot this is his third attempt at getting a point from a free, one point from play during the first half. So now we're in the 15th minute of the second half. This needs to go over, and this one, I think, has gone over. Great score. Great score, great character, great nerve, because just after, you know, a couple of moments ago, that uh, miss by him could have affected him. Took that very well. Alan Freeman's coming on and going off Jason Doherty. Yeah, I thought Jason Doherty worked very hard in the first half, maybe didn't get on the ball an awful lot, was involved in that comeback, certainly, with some of the passes he gave, but Freeman has an immense amount of ability if he can put it to use during the period that he's going to be on. And he's gone into the inside forward line there alongside Conroy and O'Connor, but they need to get the ball into them, they need to use the breeze, they need to be creative, they need to be adventurous, Mayo. They've got to put the pressure on the Donegal backs. O'Connor kicking it in, in as far as Michael Conroy. Three against him, tries to go by the first man, that's Neil McGee, gets it back towards Varley. Immediately surrounded, and the referee gets the whistle to his lips, free in from 13 metres. Donegal fans near us don't agree, they're up on their feet protesting, but it's got to be a free. Yeah, when you think about the Donegal defence, it has been noted for his concentration and discipline. They're giving away some soft enough ones here, like in the two games against Kerry and Cork. Cumulatively, they only conceded four frees that were in shooting distance. Already this game, they have conceded a lot more than that. And even oh, the Barney felt that, and now he's getting treated for cramp. Yes, and this is Killian O'Connor range. OK, it's at an acute enough angle, but big, big kick. Well, that is the angle confronting him there, playing in towards Hill 16. It used to be called the railway goal in the old days. 
when they used to refer to the goals and talking on radio about uh, the goals at Croke Park as being the railway goal and the canal end goal. Killian O'Connor kicking, and he has managed to squeeze it in brilliantly. A fifth point from a free for the Ballon Tubber player, only 20 years of age, a student teacher at St Pat's. Here it is again from a very, very sharp angle, and he's made it 2-7 to 10 points, three between them, Donegal still lead. Yeah, he's a great head for a, such a young lad. He is so composed and such great temperament for this game. Great score. Well, that's uh, three points now in this second half, scored by Mayo. Leo McLoon, surrounded immediately by Mayo players, are looking for a Donegal response now. Cavalo looks up, hits it forward. Torch Colabachan closed down brilliantly here. Kevin Kane lost it. McFadden has it, Donegal come again, Murphy trying to curl it in here, it's an ambitious kick, there was nobody inside there to challenge David Clark, and they are able to counter-attack, and it's big Barry Moore, and six foot five inches tall, booting it down here towards Killian O'Connor, couldn't take it, Anthony Thompson is back there, does well, slips it inside here, it's McHugh who carries it in, slips the hand pass into Michael Murphy, operating around midfield, on it goes through Mac McElhenney, Eventually, it's McHugh, all the Max, and finally Rory Kavanagh takes over. Back once again towards Carol Lacey, trying to go through two players, trying to go around them. Lee Keegan stopped him, in then came Kevin McLaughlin, and McLaughlin head down, intent, full of business. Out here as far as Colin Boyle, bounced off one of the Donegal players, David Walsh, comes towards Thompson, the half-back, swung forward once again to McElhenney. Donegal looking for scores now to steady things down and reassure themselves once again they've never been behind in this match. Frank McGlynn got a great point earlier on from up around that angle. Comes back here towards Rory Kavanagh. Oh, he knew what he was trying to do, slip it into Thompson, who'd made a very advanced run, but instead Higgins, now Dylan and Mayo go back into the attack again. Brilliantly taken once more here by Neil McGee. The fullback came out, committed himself, won it. Free kick quickly taken. In as far as David Walsh slips the hand pass forward, back from Leo McLoon. And there on his hands and knees eventually is Michael Murphy. And the referee goes straight to the uh, Mayo player, but signals that it's going to be a free in, and this is the reason why Barry Moore and they're colliding with uh, Michael Murphy and challenging him rather vigorously. Yes, and I think he felt that, and he felt that he's had trouble with injuries in the past, and he certainly felt that felt, but the ebb and flow of the game the last couple of minutes has been magnificent. Both teams going at it, hell for leather. There's a great sense of adventure from both teams, a great sense of, you know, the possibilities are there for either team to go and win it. A bit of more composure on either side, you know, who can be the most composed, the most calm, and whose decision-making is best between now and the final whistle will ultimately decide who wins. Well, he's back on his feet once again, Barry Moran, but there is always a concern about him. Referee having a word with him there about the tackle making sure that uh, he doesn't get into disciplinary difficulties. James Nallon out there as well. Yes, if you just go back to the source of that for a moment, like Colm O'Boyle had a ball coming up here underneath us, neath us rather, talking about decision-making, he just panicked with the ball a little bit. He had two men on the overlap, and from the turnover, the ball has ended up now where it is, with Murphy having a chance of another free. From just inside the 45-metre line, he's got a goal and a point so far. His goal, the first uh, score after three minutes. A little under that, in fact, but uh, the thought it has been in the third minute. This one high up into the air, and between the posts and over the bar. Another one for the wonderful Glenn Swilly man, the captain of this team, hoping to do what they did 20 years ago and bring Sam Maguire back to Tyrconnell. Well, there's still plenty of time, another 15 minutes still to be played in this final. But it's advantage Danny Gaul as Jer Kafferke kicks it down. And back once again comes David Walsh. The substitute across here to another sub, Martin McElhenney. Both of them making their contribution. Paddy McGrath inevitably wanting to go forward. Rory Cavanagh has been busy, influential, involved time and again. Dishing it off to McClure. Hand passed into space here. Coming on to it is David Walsh who started that attack. McHugh was hoping to finish it, instead it's taken by David Walsh, and David Walsh has put it wide, 
There were some of the Donegal followers behind the goal away to the right at the Davin end who felt it was over. It wasn't. It stays at 2 8 to 10 points. In points, that's 14 points to 10. And there's another sub. Christy Toy is coming on. Yeah, he's coming off for Leo McLoon, I think it is, Ger. Uh, Leo has gone through his, you know, his normal <laughs> kind of shift of work, but by God, he has earned his rest at this stage. And the uh, subs that they've brought on have all come on for forward players. They've come on for Ryan Bradley, Paddy McBrearty, and as you say now, Leo McLoon. So they freshen things up, keep the Mayo backs on their toes, and now it's up to Mayo to get something from this next attack. Alan Dillon, Lee Keegan trying to force his way through good combined work by Donegal stealing the ball back they work as a team they work as a unit and this has been the pattern of play instilled in them by Tim McGuinness over the last two years Christy Toy kicks it very very long it's ambitiously there and McFadden made it happen he's won it from Keane it's two players against him Danny goes and the referee's blown his whistle it's going to be a free in that was almost a hopeless ball, you thought, from uh, Christy Toy, but somehow Colin McFadden made something of it, and from this, there's an opportunity for Donegal to go five points up. Well, uh, Colin McFadden made the most of it, but just before that, I thought that Kevin Kane was somewhat hesitant in going for the ball. It was his ball, had he attacked it a little bit more decisively, McFadden made the most of that indecision, and, shall we say, manufactured the free for himself. Well, he's manufactured it, but it's uh, going to be an opportunity for Dunny for uh, Dunny Gall to get another one. As we see uh, Jason Gibbons being prepared, he's a midfielder, of course, and he's going to come on, I understand, for Michael Conroy. Yes, and just going back to it again, the source of all of that, I said, sourced quite a few times today, Ger came when I think it was Lee Keegan was stripped of the ball over on the far side when himself and Alan Dillon were involved in a combined movement. When you turn over the ball to Donegal, they'll murder you on the counter-attack. That certainly, I think, is a free, even though I think Colin Anthony made the most of it. Well, they certainly do punish any unforced passing errors, as you say, and uh, they break so quickly as well. And now, from all of that, it's Michael Murphy, composed, enjoying his afternoon at Croke Park. Why wouldn't he? He's had a storming match. And now, having scored a goal and two from this angle, he's able to put it over, almost at his ease, if that's possible, in an all-Ireland final. And now he's got a goal and three. On comes Jason Gibbons, who's playing some great football in club football for uh, his club in Mayo. On he comes now, plays for Ballantubber, of course, as well, which is uh, James Horan's club. Can he exert a big influence? Mike, Michael Conroy will be disappointed coming off. They need a goal, I would imagine, Mayo. Very much so. What's interesting in that, actually, the put Aidan O'Shea in full forward and put, Con or put Jason Gibbons in his place in the middle of the field. So now with a big target man in there, they've got to give the ball into him. So it's uh, Killian O'Connor is the provider. In towards Aidan O'Shea. That's well read by Neil McGee once again. And it's got to be a free out. Aidan O'Shea comes in, but in fact it was Eamon, his brother, who went in to assist Neil McGee got there before Aidan O'Shea dragged him down. Just one little thing, Ger. In the first half, they were kicking the ball quickly, limiting their solo run. I think they're taking a little bit too much out of the ball this time with the wing behind them. And it is uh, Danny Gall who are being at their most productive. And it's Anthony Thompson. Plays it off here to Carol Lacey. Back to McGrath. Defenders up there in the attack. It's interesting when you look at the scores that the Donegal team that won 20 years ago got, the scores that this team has got in roughly the same number of matches is almost identical. And they're coming again, and they're looking so menacing, and that was McElhenney kicking with difficulty because there were male backs almost hanging out of him, and the end result of that is the ball has gone wide, and it's got to be a kick out to Mayo. But the time ticking down, as you can see, only 10 minutes now remaining, and the gap is five points. Richie Feeney is coming in to play his part. He got a point in the semi-final win over Dublin. He's coming on for end of Varley. So wearing number 19, in comes Richie Feeney. Yes, I think Richie will go into the half-forward line and into the full-forward line, and once more will go Killian O'Connor. So you have Killian O'Connor, Alan Freeman and Aidan O'Shea in the male full-forward line at the moment. It's a mad scramble at this stage in the middle of the park to try and get possession. Racing for it here is Colin McFadden, the 29-year-old player who had thought about giving up football was pers persuaded by his brother-in-law to come back. His brother-in-law, of course, is Jim McGuinness. Back it comes here once again to Rory Kavanagh. Dangerous ball in! 
could have gone anywhere. It's uh, gone over the bar. And it's Michael Murphy once again. Goal and four now for him. Well, he came in there fearlessly, tacked that ball, got there ahead of the goalkeeper. There was nothing David Clark could do about it, or Jer Caprici. Sheer determination won that for Michael Murphy, and now he's fully determined with his Donegal colleagues now to hold on to the lead and to take the cut back to Donegal for the second time ever. Murphy once again loses it this time. Caprici has it kicks it down, they need scores urgently now, Mayo they're getting nothing easily however Killian O'Connor dragged down this time by Paddy McGrath, free in a lot of people in Donegal have been critical of Murphy this year that he hasn't been scoring enough but he's ex uh, you know, exercising a decisive influence on the outcome today well Mayo haven't scored yet from play in this second half but they need scores from somewhere Aidan O'Shea trying to get possession looking to play it to a loose player a spare player in the Red and green of Mayo, and it's eventually Killian O'Connor who kicks it waywardly away to the left-hand side. And they're almost running out of gas, this particular Mayo team, in this challenge. And it's almost 11 minutes since they last scored. It is, yes, and it's incumbent on the subs that come in. The Jason Givens, the Alan Freemans, you know, and uh, Richie Feeney's at this time to, in, you know, infuse a little bit more energy into the team. Lots of other fellas have emptied the tank nearly at this stage. It, big, big, big last 10, 15, uh, whatever it is, nine or ten minutes for Mayo. Well, that's the Sunday game, of course. It's on tonight, 9.30 with Des Cahill. We'll be at the Winners Hotel. And don't forget before that, good radio programmes. Brian Carty at just, after, just after six on Radio 1 championship program and then Debbie and O'Reilly with uh, take your point at seven your chance to comment on what you see today in the 2012 final Lee Keegan for Mayo played in here towards Donald Vaughan couldn't take it instead it is a very dominant looking Donegal side now and Eamon McGee in command and they're playing it out here with sheer determination and uh, a swagger and a style which has been part and parcel of their play all season McElhenney diagonally across, asking an awful lot of McFadden. And he chases after that one. It went off the boot of Kevin Kane. It's going to be a line ball for Danny Gaul, who are now just about six and a half minutes away from the final whistle, or close to it. And they've that two-goal cushion the whole time. And those two vital goals coming in the opening 11 minutes of this game. McFadden getting the second of those. Kicks it in. Goes very, very long. It won't matter a great deal at this stage because they have that comfortable lead. And uh, Michael Murphy taking umbrage with something that happened there involving Kevin Kane. Mayo kick it out quickly, out to Alan Dillon. Played in the final of 2004 and scored a goal that day. Played in 2006, lost those two finals. And it's not looking too good here. But there is still time and uh, you never know. Here's Kevin McLaughlin. Everybody for Donegal virtually back there, the kind of blanket defence, but Richie Feeney trying to steal a march on them all, onto the right and hitting it over the bar. His second ever championship point and a valuable contribution. It just about keeps Mayo going here, five between them once again, but now the time ticking down to about five minutes from the finish. Well, his family steeped in the traditions of Gaelic games in Mayo and the Mayo fans here just trying to raise a cheer once again now to get right behind the team if they can win some primary possession in and around midfield because Donegal have been known in the past to take their foot off the pedal metaphorically for the last few minutes Lee Keegan advancing hitting with some difficulty it's up into the air oh lands on the netting and goes over the bar amazingly Ambitious. Well, he is a great driving force, Lee Keegan, the 22-year-old from Westport, playing today in his seventh championship match. Down it came, bang onto the netting, and now it's a four-point game, and nobody's giving up just yet, where Mayo's concerned. An absolute beauty, and I just talked a couple of moments ago about the impact the sub needed to make. Richie Feeney in the last two plays has contributed a point and assist that time. They need one or two more. Paul Durkin again. They need to win this one. And they do. Back down to Colin Boyle. Sending it in long. 
Remember, Aidan O'Shea's in there now, but then Johnny Gall have got a covering back in front of him. Very, very clever tactics. They have a lot of players back. And Johnny Gall hold the possession here now, will weather this little storm and realise there is still some work to do. Rory Cavada. They've been through many a crisis in the last couple of years. Came back from that horrible beating against Armagh two years ago in the Championship on the same day that Mayo were knocked out by Longford. And 20 of the 30 players who played that day are in action in this All-Ireland final. It's still Johnny Gall and it's still David Walsh. Again, they try and work it forward. Christy Toy now, battle-hardened warrior over the years. Going nowhere because he's surrounded by Mayo players, but it's back to David Walsh once more. Now Neil Gallagher, space on the left-hand side. Frank McGlynn cleverly using that space. Back in again, he comes towards him. Beautifully constructed, neatly choreographed, and finished by Neil Gallagher, knocking it over the bar. The big, physically imposing midfielder gets up to get just his first point in this match, the third in this year's championship, three or four players involved, and that could be very, very important. Highly decisive, I would think. I agree with you, Jerk. It's the decisive score of the match, and it is uh, probably set the seal for a Donegal victory. Back come Mayo. Richie Feeney once again. Jerk Cafferkey trying to join the attack. Likewise, Keith Higgins. And while they were considering their move, the ball was stolen by Donegal and swiftly forward by McElhenney once more. Christy Toy, who was the architect of that last attack, holding it up here now, with a steadying influence in and around midfield, able to hold the ball, shave a few seconds off the clock as we get closer and closer to 70 minutes. 68 minutes gone, and once again, it's Rory Cavanagh sending it in as far as Carol Lacey. Lacey just holding it, taking it back from McElhenney, Again, trying to locate a colleague, but that time taking out Feeney. And on now as far as McLaughlin. Mayo need a goal. Two against two, and there's an extra player going back to help out. In fact, two. Thompson, the other extra player who went back for Danny Goal. When there's a sniff of danger, they all go back and they shoulder the responsibility collectively. Yeah, but the collective work that time with Freeman and Aiden wasn't that, you know, was poor because if one of them had gone for the ball, the other broken it, I think something more could have come of it. Donald Vaughan, back to Cafferkey. In here as far as Killian O'Connor, all his points have come from Freeze when he was in around full forward. Jason Gibbons hitting it long, very neatly so, over the bar. Really good play by Jason Gibbons there. And uh, Jason Gibbons getting his first ever championship point. But is it far too late and far too little because there are still four between them? Yeah, Donegal at the moment looks set fair to win this game. Don uh, Mayo will need a goal, <laughs> obviously what I'm saying, but they'll need a goal or two, I think, to win this game. And I cannot see them overcoming them by, you know, by scoring five points in the last couple of minutes. Well, Shane O'Shea has come on for uh, Barry Mullen. Getting a few minutes of action here as Kevin McLaughlin carries it forward once again in the 70th minute of this final where Mayo made an awful start battled hard to get themselves back into it but there was always that gap closest they could get to it for about three minutes maybe here you never know still possible stumbling falling and eventually the referee has gone in from a distance and said play on and Mayo looked like they were lining up for a score there your Shamey O'Shea and your Jason Gibbons in there, foraging, waiting. Three minutes of added time are going to be played as we watch this again. Alan Freeman, Shamey O'Shea, down went Rory Kavanagh. Still it was Shamey O'Shea. Yeah, I think in fairness, Shamey lost his balance that time. I don't think he was fault, and Dorkin is perfectly entitled to yep. gather the ball inside the small rectangle like that. No question about it, he did stumble and the goalkeeper was, as you say, absolutely entitled to do what he did. And the end result, a free out. So 30 seconds of the opening three minutes of uh, added time is now being played. And there's the Sam Maguire Cup, first presented in 1928. And the first winners were Kildare. Will the latest winners be Dunny Gall? Into stoppage time. And once again, it is Mayo 
a one and a free kick and it's going to be taken here by Shami O'Shea, you better hurry they need a couple of quick goals and I don't think it's going to happen for them because this is a mean resolute Donegal defence and down went Anthony Tompkins under the weight of that challenge yes and this suits Donegal perfectly, Aidan O'Shea came in that time fouled Anthony Thompson, probably will take a booking as a consequence and slows the game down and perfect for Donegal it's of no benefit whatsoever to uh, Mayo, that's for sure. As they are set, it seems, to lose what will be their third final in seven years. And a long, long line of disappointments as O'Shea gets the yellow card. It'll be their sixth All-Ireland final defeat in 23 years since their last victory, some 61 years ago, and counting at this point in time. Dermot the Brick Malloy has come on, and he's come on in uh, place there of... Uh, I think it's Martin McElhenney who's come off for the last couple of minutes. It's a case of giving Dermot an opportunity to share in the glory. And that's what it's set to be in about another minute's time. And it's a free kick to Danny Gall. They were the favourites coming into this. Many people said, how could Jim McGuinness possibly shield his players from all that was happening around them? The county was on fate. There were people coming from all over the world to see Danny Gall win what would be a second All-Ireland Championship. They kept their feet on the ground, they were resolute and determined, and they have engineered what is certainly a marvellous victory. And finally it's Rory Kavanagh kicking, and Rory Kavanagh puts that one to the left, it's not going to matter very much, other than that it's the seventh wide. And now we wait for Jim McGuinness and his team to take the salute of the crowd. 15 seconds to go, referee's looked at his watch, he's going to play at least three minutes, it's sheer agony for Mayo and their followers. No county deserves to lose like they have lost, but it happens, that sport, and we all know about that. They ran into a very, very tough Donegal team as Michael Murphy went down injured. It's all over, and Donegal are the All-Ireland champions. They'll leap for joy. Jim McGuinness there, Rory Kavanagh. Rory Gallagher, I should say. 20 years on from the day the Tier Connell men won their first, they've won another. Then it was Brian McIniff calling the shots, and now it's Jim. Jim McGuinness has guided a group of talented, highly motivated players. He's challenged them to do it his way, and the players have bought into the notion, and they've realised their potential, and the crowds are staying off the field. It must be very hard for them. This Danny Gold side has beaten Mayo and it's abject misery for the Connor champions. But today's day is for Jim McGuinness and for Danny Gold. They've done it from a near empty base two years ago in Cross McGlen, where they lost a qualifier to Armagh. And they've come through two Ulster campaigns unbeaten to inflict yet another final defeat on Lockless Mayo. They'll be taking that Sam Maguire Cup home. Danny Gold, the Masters. Donegal the champions, Jim has done it, they've all done it, Donegal are the new winners of the Sam Maguire and an, emo an emotional, quite emotional tsunami is set to sweep over Donegal, more misery however for Mayo. Well Jerry it must be said that after the Dublin defeat last year Donegal were regarded as pariahs, they were regarded as the group who had cannibalised the code. They were looked on as the apostles of anti-football. But this group of guys have shown quality. They've forced a rethink and a reassessment on how they should be accepted. They've been exceptional athletes and they've stitched together six displays or seven displays of power teamwork with athleticism, skill, belief and courage, character have been the trademarks of their, uh, of their play. They're worthy winners today, they're deserving champions. And from the tip of Mallon to the southerly point of the Drouse River, to the hills, the valleys, the towns along the majestic coastline, through the wild wilderness of the Blue Stacks, this will be celebrated by no other and fair play to them. Yeah, it certainly is their day. Michael Murphy, the captain, Jim McGuinness, a man who has always accentuated the positive, and this trophy, the most famous trophy in Irish sport, is going back to Tia Connell. She's happy, they're all happy, 
Jim's fixed it. Uh, could I just mention briefly, Seamus Boner, a great stalwart of Donegal is watching this, not in great form at the moment, as is Jim Natch Gallagher. And Seamus O'Kane, who emigrated on this day in 1961 to go to Australia, former great Donegal footballer. It's a great day for them. But for Mayo, just to go to them, they have nothing, only, to, you know, the disappointment of losing will be acute. But their character, their defiance was wonderful to witness today after an appalling start. And they've come out of this with an awful lot of credit. Well, there were a lot of people wondering whether or not Carol Lacey and his colleagues would be able to enjoy this without the fans intruding and coming in. And thankfully, the fans are playing their part by staying up on Hill 16 and in the seats and in the stands and allowing the players just this moment to themselves. They always say afterwards, the 20 minutes or so after the final whistle, when they're down there on the ground, that's so special. Yes, and when you think about it, Carl Lacey today, you know, maybe it wasn't his most spectacular game, but it was, as we said before, the power of the collective, that honesty and hard work that Donegal have shown all, all year, and the hope and expectation of all riding together today have come together for Jim McGuinness. Colm Anthony McFadden, a person who was on the scrap heap three years ago, Peter McGon, the county chairman with him, a wonderful former footballer himself, and look at that for joy. And the sun has come out as well, making it just the most perfect day if you happen to be from Donegal. But sympathies to everybody from Mayo. They played their hearts out, as Martin Carney was saying, but defeat is their lot once again. There's P.J. McGowan there, the county chairman. There's uh, Paddy McFrearty, the youngest player to play in the final. Frankie McGlynn there and Michael Murphy. And there's a picture for the local papers, I'm sure, later in the week. And yeah. the music sounds all around Croke Park. And it's a sheer picture of joy, a wonderful afternoon for Danny Gall. It's about the winners, however. Top on the losers. Very hard on the losers, very hard on Mayo to stomach defeat once more. But as I said, Mayo have come out of this game today with a lot of kudos. After that appalling start for the consumers, eight, seven points down within, you know, the first ten minutes of the match. They really took the game back to Donegal. They really forced Donegal to come out and earn that victory today. But Jim McGuinness's imprint, thumbprint, whatever print you want to call it, has been on this team from the beginning. And by God, have they come some journey from the ashes of Cross McGlenn two years ago. Well, we just uh, are about to see the presentation of the Sam Maguire Cup to Danny Gall. And the Taoiseach there, a disappointed Mayo man, as all Mayo people will be, and the president, Uchter on coming Luke Raskale, Liam O'Neill about to make that presentation. <laughs> 20 years on, can you believe it, from the day they won it with Brian McIniff in charge, Anthony Malloy, Martin McHugh, James McHugh, all the great players, Joyce McMullen, now it's a whole new group of players, they are the new legends. Yes, and with... It's law on to Fisher, the fell Gaelic, I was a common loot fast fail, I was wall on... We have a goal, then we all have a student now, as some clear, owned up, braver, sportual, or how they're doing in you. To hard volley, tilt tag, I can die iron. Volum co Rona Coronel, the we all. Predator, the Diandera, up the Ambua, I can find a star in you. Tres Liam O'Cree, the Duna now, as some Bua owned up a Vioco in you. Peter Marfurin Neblina or Hus Neblina, August is Kriak Arunak a shot to even you. While I'm with us of oil, the Ulster Bank Super Value, August Air Pam, a Sonoric Hogger doing Aaron Grave shot. August Anish is Kush Ahish, August Anora Dom, Kern Sam McGuire, Ervrona. Our Felidor Nablina, Captain Untuk Dunagal, Mihal Omoraku. 1992 has been bridged. 2012, Michael Murphy from Glen Swilly, only 23 years of age, takes the Sam Maguire Cup from Liam O'Neill. Donegal are champions! Champions for the second time and very, very worthy champions. Celebration time at Croke Park where 82,000 people 
have witnessed the occasion. Well, he came, Jim McGuinness, with a message to the players, and they believed he gave them the challenge. They took on board that challenge. This is the end result. Yeah, I'm so pleased for Michael Murphy. Wonderful young fella, a humble lad, guy who has given immense service to the county, even at a tender age of 23. And just uh, when you look at him there, you know, his dad will be so proud today, a Bunny Conlon man from County Mayo, but his dad, Mayo, he might be born, but by Donegal, he will be today in heart and soul. We have him! Look around the hair, look around coming to the class gale, the carriage gale, Tass and Doe and Aram, and Corin Shaw and Glacu, her fair and thin and now. Delighted to accept this trophy on behalf of the Donegal team. It's an absolute fantastic honour and privilege here to climb these steps on behalf of each and every one of these players to my left. The management team out there and each and every one of the people that only go on. Firstly, to go through a lot of thank yous to these players here to my left. The commitment, the dedication, everything that they have done over the last two plus years has been an absolute credit. I'd say a massive shout out to each and every one of the players that have put the shoulder to the wheel throughout the last two years. Thanks, boys. <laughs> to the families, to the wives, to the girlfriends, to all the close friends, to each and every one of the players and backroom team. I want to really, really thank you from the bottom of my heart for the continued support that you've given us throughout the last couple of years. Massive dedication that everybody had to put on. A big thank you to you. <laughs> to the backroom team, to Pat Shovelin, Max Corn, Michael McMenamin, Joe McCluskey, Charles McGuinness, to Adam Spear, Eugene Ivers and Gadam Ward. Boys, thanks a million hey, for getting us in the best of shape. <laughs> to the medical team, Mr. Kevin Moore and Dr. Charlie McManus, Dermot Simpson, JD McGrenner, Donald Reed, Charlie Malloy, and Paul Coyle. Thanks for keeping all the injuries at bay. Thanks a million men. The sponsors, Missouri, Donegal Creameries, and to everyone that's generously con contributed towards the whole training fund all year. Um, I really, really thanks to the whole lot of us. As I say, to run a team these years takes a lot of money, and I say thanks a million to everyone. I want to give a special thanks to Evolve Menswear and Letterkenny for getting us out with suits and casual gear throughout the year, and also to McGinnis Buses and Kevin for the top class transport. <laughs> to the County Board for their brilliant cooperation, support, and help throughout the whole number of years. Thanks a million for making everything possible. We're getting there. To the clubs all around the county, just want to thank some million for the use of their pitches and facilities, especially St. Gunnings, McCool's, and Castle Fun. To our caterers, Jimmy McGlynn, Jackson's Hotel, Villa Rose, Mount Eregal, and Abbey Hotel, Johnstown House, thanks a million. To the Mayo team, just want to thank you, a million boys, for a sporting game out there today. Out there today, could have went any way at all. They're a fantastic group of footballers, and I'm sure we've seen them back throughout the years. Three cheers for me, oh, hip hip.
So two men now that have helped us and brought this county over the last couple of years from something small to an All-Ireland final. The two of them have put on a massive effort to Rory Gallagher for his help, his football and knowledge. A fantastic addition to Donegal and Donegal football. Rory, from each one of the players here and from people Donegal, I'd like to thank you very, very much. Because Jim McGuinness, where do we start? From every man, woman in Donegal, both players and people alike, I owe him a massive debt of gratitude. The man's worth ethic is just absolutely, it's undescribable. His passion for Donegal football throughout the last two years and over his playing career is another thing that's undescribable. And again, a massive debt of thanks towards Jim from the players and also from the people of Donegal. Thanks a million, Jim. Finally, a massive thanks to you, the fans, and everybody in Donegal. <laughs> Donegal has always been a, a massive football, and as how would you say, everybody craves success in it. Unfortunately, over the last maybe a number of years, since 92, we haven't been able to deliver the success as a group of footballers. But here today, and before we go out onto the pitch, we are always thought that we're representing the people of Donegal and we're representing the crest of Donegal. Thanks a million. <laughs> one last thing. Jimmy's winning matches. Jimmy's winning games. Jimmy's bringing Sally back to Donegal. We found our singer for the Eurovision. Yeah, Johnny Gold's day. They won by four points in the end. Even though Mayo created more scoring chances, 27 to 22. Both teams had 13 scores during the final today. Interesting scores from play. Johnny Gold got uh, some 2-5 from play. Mayo got seven points from play. But they have conceded the trophy to Johnny Gold as. The players now share in the glory of the afternoon by lifting that trophy. And Jim is there with his family, his wife Yvonne, and the three children down there to share in the glory. There's Paddy McBrearty, the youngest player to play in the final. And the two brothers were involved, Neil McGee and his brother Eamon. There's Neil Gallagher, the big midfielder. And there's Mark McHugh, maybe a candidate for young player of the year, I would imagine. Ryan Bradley and Frank McGlynn mark him down as an all-star, no question about it. There'll be many of them, I'm sure, on that very gold team. Edwin Handlin there, one of the substitutes who didn't get in today. He did. Rory Kavanagh. And your commentators on today's All-Ireland Football Final were Ger Canning and Martin Carney. Well, it all went a little bit quiet uh, for a while during that speech, but as you can see, the celebrations are beginning to ratchet up again here at Croke Park, and no doubt the celebrations here at Croke Park are only the beginning of the mothers of all celebrations you're going to see in Donegal tomorrow when the Sam Maguire Cup heads northwest.
Joe Barley, Pat's Plan and Colin O'Rourke are here with me in studio and I'm sure uh, the three lads like myself in congratulating Johnny Gold should also say uh, and certainly on my own behalf on behalf of other neighbours in Connacht commiserations to Mayo uh, another unfortunate day for them but Joe Brawley it is Donegal's day and deservedly so uh, well a brilliant conception by Jim McGuinness and you know it's true that Jimmy is winning matches it is true you know the after they'd got the seven point lead it was inevitable really it's not possible against Donegal to break down that blanket defence and in the second half they just did what they normally do they nicked scores here and there Mayo played very well Mayo's setup was perfect. They shepherded Donegal into cul-de-sacs. They did everything they could do, but they simply couldn't break down the defence as the game wore on. And you also have to have, you also have to have some special players. And in Michael Murphy, we saw him as a boy wonder, and today he has matured into the great player that we knew that he was. I mean, his influence in the game was enormous. He scored 1-4. Each of them was a brilliant score. The goal in the first half was the catalyst. In the second half, when Donegal were under pressure, he kicked, he, he kicked two brilliant frees. Mm fisted that ball over the bar and you need some special players but overall I mean I just think that the game the, the, the outcome was inevitable after the first quarter but you would have to say that Mayo deserve great credit for the way they set up today. That's Milan. Well congratulations to Donegal. Uh, deserving champions, great champions, absolutely fantastic. It was, it's a fabulous occasion. I mean just mm, mm. You, it makes you proud to be a member of the GA, the whole occasion, the atmosphere, the camaraderie, you know, the way the players now can celebrate on the field the play. It was just brilliant. It was an enjoyable game, it was an interesting game, absorbing, enthralling, very, very enjoyable and credit to Mayo for making a game of it. Absolutely, they, I, you, my heart goes out for them. They deserve an All-Ireland. Unfortunately, there's no All-Ireland title handed out for sympathy, whatever. But they made a game of it. This was, like I said, a different bunch of Mayo players who dug deep when they were seven points down and were into it up to the last five minutes. So, well done to both teams and well done to Donegal. Great champions. And Colin Rook. Well, it would be very ungenerous not to congratulate Donegal, considering that we were heavy, heavily critical of them last year. And it's a proper All-Ireland in so far to beat in Tyrone, Cork, yes. Kerry and Mayo to win it. And I think they stumbled over the line a bit. I think the whole favouritism weighed a bit heavily on their shoulders and they didn't play as well as any other of the big no. games this year. But yet, what does it matter when you win in All-Ireland? I suppose, as Joe said, it was almost inevitable after the two goals went in. And Mayo are everybody's sort of favourite team. But they fought very, very bravely today. It was a great display from them for the last 60 minutes of the game. And it's just unfortunate that they give away the two goals. But Donegal have been the team of the year, and the Sam Maguire is going where it belongs. The, the thing about them is this, Colin, you know, I, I disagree with what you said, because Donegal never plays champion football. They don't cut you to pieces. You, we saw very clearly again today, as soon as Donegal got that fifth point from Michael Murphy, he was beckoned back into the midfield area and they just set up their defensive phalanx. The thing about them is, against Kerry, they beat Kerry by two points. Cork, they beat by two points. They could have won this game by a lot more today, but again, they were content to win it by three or four points. This is simply the nature of the system that they've chosen. And the virtue, the great virtue that it has, is that those boys stick to that through yeah, thick or thin. It's unquestioning. Yeah. Everyone's got, they've just got a plan A, they've got nothing else, and they're simply grinding teams down. But it, it goes back to what I said before the game, that in terms of evolution, the Donegal system of play is one year more advanced they're than the Mayo team. Better, and and they're, they're, very well, they're very well organised. And what Mayo, they're very well organised defensively. And bear in mind, like, like the lad said today, today was the first day that they really had to dig deep at times. That, have, that they, you know, they met fire with fire. But what Mayo didn't have, Mayo didn't have the pace or the guile or the cunning to get to break down that Donegal defence. And secondly, when they handed Mayo's defence, Mayo's defenders fouled seven times and handed seven points. But look, the bottom line is 2-1 to no score after 11 minutes and you know God that well. I, I, Donegal I, weren't going I to lose a seven-point lead. I don't, I don't buy into this that this is a revolution in Gaelic football. No. It's a slight step more advanced than what we had from Tyrone seven or eight years ah, ago, come on, call except up. that Tyrone maybe had better individual forwards at that time. Maybe Donegal have moved it on to, to a greater level in terms of intensity and short passing. But that System. type of game has been there 
It that's actually that's, that's was completely it, wrong, Colin. It was actually invented by Tyrone about five or six years ago and has been polished up a bit by you, Donegal. You, you, and in the meantime, you, lads, I think the only thing that's going to persuade these uh, Donegal supporters to actually leave Croke Park this evening is they'll want to get home before the team uh, arrives back tomorrow night.